Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this JD's Garage CNC Plasma Table. So I'm going to walk you through my build process. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you have not already, please like the channel and subscribe. So let's get started. I always wanted a CNC machine for my plasma cutter, but looking at all the CNC machines available online, they're very expensive. They're above my price range. One day I stumbled upon a YouTube channel, JT's Garage, and one of their videos they have a CNC machine for under $500. So I was curious, I went to their website, and I bought their plans for their CNC machine. I am really glad I did. I'm going to show you in this video on my build for my own CNC machine. I did tweak a couple things here and there for me. I will walk you through what I did, and if you are interested, go over to JT's Garage and get your own plans. It's well worth it. Included in the plans are the 3D print files for every part you're going to need to 3D print. If you do not have a 3D printer, the 3D printed parts you need are available on their website. The first thing I did was to read over the plans and then print all the parts I needed With all the 3D printed parts printed, the next thing to do is start building. Included in the plans is a complete shopping list of everything you're going to need down to the screws. Some of the parts you're going to need were on back order, so my suggestion is as soon as you get the plans, order all the parts you need. The first thing I started working on was the gantry. So here I'm cutting out my gantry. The next thing I'll do is I'll get the flanges that I 3D printed. I will line them up on the outside. I will mark for my holes. I will drill and tap those holes. Next thing for me to do is to work on my top gantry plate and cut out my triangle bracket. I used my Yes Welder Cut 65DS to cut that triangle out. After cutting the triangle bracket out, I welded it to the top gantry plate. Once I'm finished welding this together, I will then weld it to the gantry tube. The welder I'm using today is my MP200. In the plans, they give you printable templates. They are one-to-one -one scale, so when you print them, you can cut them out, you can attach them to the plate or whatever object you're cutting out. And in this case, I'm cutting out plates for the frame. I'm using magnets to hold them in place and cut them out so they're exact fit. Some people will use spray adhesive and glue them down to the plates that they're cutting out as well. With my plates cut out, I'm then going to mark all my holes and then drill them out. As I mentioned earlier, some of the parts were on back order. So some of those parts came in for me, so I was able to finish the gantry. And here I am assembling the bearing block to mount onto the gantry. Once I finish assembling the bearing block, I can then mount it onto the gantry flanges. Once that's together, then I can attach it all to the gantry. The plans call for a really thin gauge tube for the x-axis. The problem I ran into was my steel provider, they do not carry that thin of a gauge. So I went on Marketplace, I did find an aluminum tube, 8 inch wall, with the hope that this would work because I couldn't get that thin gauge. 
The ideal here is to keep the x-axis as light as possible so it doesn't bow down from the weight. Next thing I cut out is all the framing. After we're cutting out all the framing, I will grind up all the edges, clean up the edges. I will mark all the holes. I will drill and start assembling the frame. Setting up a stop lock made quick work of the repetitive cuts. The plates you saw me cut out earlier were part of the Y axis. By using one of the legs, it perfectly spaces out the upper and lower Y axis, the perfect space to mount the plates. After assembling the frame, I started working on the x-axis. I cut out the motor mount. Like I said, in the plans, it gives you a 1 to 1 scale that you can trace it onto the metal to cut out. Then once the motor mount is cut out, I started assembling the x-axis. At this point of the build, everything is assembled. The next thing I did was break it apart, prime it, and paint it. Then once everything was painted, I put it all back together again. The next thing to do is the electronics. I know the electronics can be a little intimidating, but the plans given, they do an excellent job of walking you through step by step. Here I'm going to cut out the slats used for the material to sit on for the plasma cutter to cut out everything. What I'm using is 2 inch by 8 inch flat bar. These slats are going to be used as the bed of the plasma cutter that's for the material to sit on. In order to hold the slats, I'm going to take the same 2 inch material. I'm going to notch it out so that the slats can sit into it. To make sure it's uniform, I'm going to weld on half inch flat bar on the bottom for the slats to rest on. I'm going to take angle iron and I'm going to weld it on either side to so it will free stand. This way if you do not have a water pan, you can sit it on the side rails of the frame. At this point of the build, depending on your budget, you can stop right here and the machine is fully functional. There are other options that are in the plans as well and these options are optional and each one will cost you a little bit more money depending on how far you want to go with it. I chose to add the extra options. One is a z-axis touch off. It'll touch off on the material and set its height. Without this you have to set your torch height manually. The other option I chose was a water pan. On Amazon I got the water pan for $139. At this point, the build is done. I'm testing out the controls. I'm using the open build software and I'm manually moving the XYZ, making sure everything's moving properly. It was definitely a fun build. I did learn a lot on the build process. Let's try it out. The plasma cutter I'm using is my Yeswater CT2050. The plasma cutter itself is CNC compatible.
As you see, I did several attempts on this, but I was able to get a good cut on this one I'm showing you now. There was still something slightly off, and what I found out was the aluminum the square tube I used was too heavy for the x-axis. So when the torch was fully extended, the x-axis would sag about an eighth an inch. So my solution for this was I 3D printed a bearing holder that I mounted on the bottom of the x-axis. I used spare bearings and also the 8mm rod that I purchased for the z-axis touch-off. And I created a railing using 1x1 one one square tubing. What you see here is a dry run testing out the railing. The bearing rolls perfectly on the railing and I, I get no loss on height. So with everything fixed, let me show you how this thing really cuts. Before I do this cut, I'm going to wet up the railing since I know it works really well. And I'm going to mount it onto the frame. I am going to make this removable. Now if you notice, the machine is really low to the ground. Because if you remove the bolts and the legs, you can fold this up and you can store it away. I do have limited space in my shop. Being able to remove the bolts, fold it up, make it smaller, and be able to store it is huge for the limited space I have. With the railing welded, I can reattach it, and let's get to cutting. When you see the torch get in position, you're going to see the torch lower, touch the metal, then come up. This is the optional Z-axis touch-off that I was telling you about. This is how it works. This will repeat itself on every cut. And there, the nice thing about this, if you do have any difference in height in your material, this should pick up on it. As always, if you have any questions about the job, about the materials used today, or any suggestions about future projects, please let me know in the comments below. A couple of the changes I made, well, one was with the active belt mount, and the other is with the idler belt mount. I made them larger because on the Y-axis, it had to stand off more for the belt to ride smoother. I did use the GX16 4-pin aviation connectors. I use this for all the connections going to the electronics and also to connect to the plasma cutter. I did design in Tinkercad a holder for these connections. In the plans, there is a design for a cable support. This cable support is a 3 quarter inch piece of electrician conduit. I designed and 3D printed a mount to go onto the frame for this, and it made it nice and stable. Lastly, I created a mount for all the electronics for the Arduino. I also did a Bluetooth module so I don't have to connect the computer to this, and also the relay. So there you have it. The CNC machine worked perfectly. The Yeswater CT2050 worked really well with the CNC. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please like the channel and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.